this is Portia. She's our rescue puppy. And why, how did I get stuck with this? <laughs> Oh, goodness. What do you... That was close. It had an auto shift in it. I absolutely hated it. We feel very blessed to be able to customize our home away from home. I'm Amy Burke. I'm Chris Burke. Worked with Reliable since 1994. This is Portia. She's our rescue puppy. We um, got her. She was left on the side of a driveway by a heroin addict, so we went and got her right after our other dog had passed away. And she's been trucking with us since she was three months old. We grew up in the same neighborhood together. I was 14, he's seven years older than me, so I would watch him work on his trucks at his grandparents' yard. <laughs> But we grew up in the same neighborhood and just been friends for a really long time. I've only been driving for 10 years. This is the only career that he's ever had. Yeah, I've been driving since I was 18, so yeah, I'm 54 now. <laughs> Couple days. <laughs> I've always loved trucks. When I was little, I always would ask for dump trucks and stuff, and my family would say, no, don't you want a you know, kitchen set or play with dolls? And I said, no, I want a dump truck. When we got together, he taught me how to drive and been driving ever since. This truck is actually a, a truck I bought that was uh, wrecked over the last five years. I put a different engine into it, put a different, uh, well, when I got it, it didn't have a sleeper. It's a uh, 2014, the engine's a 2019. It's turned out to be a really good truck so far. We've had it on the road for about six months. Well, come on in. We'd love to show you our home away from home. Good girl. Good girl. Hello, welcome to the cab of a 386 Peterbilt. Pretty standard cab, has a manual transmission. I, I definitely uh, like this over the one of the trucks we had, which it had an auto shift in it. I absolutely hated it. So this has a 13-speed manual and CB radio, has cruise. It has pretty much all the options most people have in their car. Electric windows, electric locks, good air conditioning, which you need on a day like today. Nice stereo system. Uh, yeah, I had a custom steering wheel. I bought this uh, about three months ago. Been real happy with it. My wife got the pedals for the truck, polished aluminum pedals. Yeah, this is our new home as of six months ago. This is the short tour of the cab and uh, my wife Amy will show you the bunk along with Porsche. Welcome to our bunk. We designed the sleeper with being in mind that this is our beach house. I love the water. I love the sand just the warmth of the sun. So I did um, the Corian countertop to keep it as light as possible. The maple to represent my sand. I have my blue handles, which in my mind, that's my beach glass. And then we have our driftwood floor and the blue front or facer panels to represent the water. So we wanted it to stay as bright and open as possible, but still have some color. Both of our favorite colors are blue and purple and orange. So we try to incorporate all of those in here as well. My friend Patty, she made me a, a quilt that's got um, pieces of beach glass on it to bring it in to, with our beach theme in here. So we try to keep everything as organized as possible when we're going down the road. Sometimes people will cut in front of you and gotta hit the brakes. So I don't want things scattered all over the place. So we try to keep everything in storage containers with labels so that we know exactly where everything is. We just pull it out when we need it. And then of course we have the hanging wardrobes, both top and bottom. And the bed will fold down. It's almost a queen size. And I do have a back door that we put in. So because I'm only five feet tall, it's very hard for me to load my things in the truck to try and put it through a side door and I don't like bringing stuff in through the, the cab. So I'm gonna just put the bed down, put everything on the deck plate and transfer it in and then come inside and put everything away. We move the TV to the foot of the bed so that we can see it better when we're in bed or if I'm making dinner and my husband's sitting, he can watch TV as opposed to it being in the front corner where I was always in the way when I was making dinner. I have my laundry hamper here on the side 
You can remove it by removing the panel here. And then this is my office space. All of the drawers pull out. I have outlets behind each drawer so I can keep things like my printer plugged in or phone chargers or whatever. And then this top drawer folds down. So if I need to access things or put larger things in, it's easier that way. The mirrors on the outside, not only to make it appear larger, but to have extra places for us to, if we're in a hurry to get ready, you can be at one end of the truck and then I'm at the other. And I put my convection oven under the countertop because with me being so short, I was afraid of pulling things down and spilling hot items on me. So I put it down, down below, which makes it very user-friendly for me anyways. So then up top, I have all of my extra storage and this pulls out as well to reach the things in the back. And then I added some shelving up top just to maximize the storage space. Here we have the refrigerator freezer combo, which I was quite surprised from our other truck. It's very deep. We can store a lot of stuff in it and it does get very, very cold to keep the meat and everything really frozen solid. And then we did put divider bars in to help if you open the door when you're going down the road so the things don't fall out on your feet. And here we have our cooktop. I keep the little rubber pad on the top of it so things don't skid around when we're going down the road. But that works really nice as opposed to some of the ones that have, are recessed in the countertop that restrict you to a certain size pan. So this way I can have a larger pan and not have to worry about it getting into the base of the counter. When we made the sleeper, we wanted to have the kitchen sink behind the passenger seat so that if I was sitting down here doing paperwork, I still have user friendly space and I don't have to worry about papers. We do have the cover that goes over the top of it, which makes it nice so that you can put the extra food on there. Cause we do like to have people over from time to time. Like if we're at a racetrack and we'll have, you know, Taco Tuesday or something. And this way we can set up like a nice buffet area. And then here we have the, the shades, daytime to let night light through, nighttime to, to black out. And then one of the cool things about the windows is when you open them, you can open them when it's raining or windy and you won't get the, the water inside the sleeper because they fold out. But the downside to that is, is you can't have a window open going down the road because it could catch it and, and pull it off the truck. And then of course, my favorite part of the whole sleeper is the bathroom. And I always keep my trash can in here because I don't, like stuff in the middle of the walkway if you have to hit the brakes. I don't want to come forward chasing my dog up front or whatever. So, but we have a potty, a shower, everything we need all contained in there. And then at night, or if we're driving team and Chris needs to sleep so that he can, can drive at night, we can close this off and it's magnetic as well. So you fasten it at the top and then it magnets shut and it, keeps the light out and he can get some good rest while I'm driving. Our AC unit, it works very well. We have vents all throughout the ceiling. I did put one in the shower, in the bathroom too. Sometimes if you're out at the proving grounds and loading or unloading in the desert, it's really, really hot. So it just kind of helps to get cooled down, get refreshed before you get driving. So put a lot of thought into designing our, our sleeper to fit our needs and our likes and our color scheme and to try to keep things as, as bright and airy as possible, but yet have ample storage space. I feel very blessed to be able to customize our home away from home. We thank you for checking out our bunk and we'd like for you to come out and see our trailer. This is our trailer. It's a 2007 Featherlight has four decks upstairs and a floating floor downstairs. This deck moves up and down. We can also unpin these panels and take them out so we can even gain more height when we have really tall vehicles. It's set up with chain tie downs in the floor. We have the E-Track on the floor for the tire straps. We can haul up to seven medium to small cars. We have a winch in it. We do haul a lot of stuff that uh, is non-running. The auctions tend to have uh, barn finds and, and vehicles that haven't been moved in, you know, 
five, sometimes 20 years. So we do utilize the winch quite often. Back here, I have recently, I've taken this rear deck out and set it on the floor. And we loaded vehicles that were nine foot, two inches tall in the back. And actually we're able to bring them down in here. This was lowered to the, to the floor. Our lift gate will actually turn into a ramp. We can actually just drive them into the trailer. When we bought it, it was pretty much kind of a, a shell. It didn't have the Ford X, but it didn't have any of this. I, I've added all floating floor to it. I've widened the wheel boxes just to make it more user friendly and uh, make it versatile to haul all the different types of vehicles that we encounter. We have checkered flags all over our truck and trailer because uh, when I bought my new Peterbilt in 1997, my friend Mario uh, drew up some drawings. I like checkered flags and so he added that to my 97 Peterbilt. This is the uh, last edition of it that he's done. He did the tractor uh, six, seven months ago and the trailer we did about three or four years ago. He likes to have fun as you can tell and that's how we ended up with checkered flags all over the truck and trailer. Living in a truck with your husband, um, it can be challenging. You have to choose your battles, but it's good. I wouldn't change it for anything. I like to drive team. I like to keep going. I love to drive. I love being out on the road and seeing the different locations. We have some really, really amazing customers. I love to see the customers and interact with them. And some of them, we've gotten to watch their children grow up over, over the years, just in different times taking them different vehicles. I'll drive days and he drives nights. So we just keep keep going as much as we can. Then when the auctions roll around, then we'll go to the auction and take a little break from being out on the road. She loves to be on the road. She loves uh, trucking. She'll sit up front and look out the window or, or she likes to hold, hold my hand if we're driving. So she'll put her paw on mine. Ever since we put her in the truck, as soon as the truck would start moving, she just, like a real baby would fall asleep. <laughs> There's so many unique events. I mean, Monterey is probably the the biggest event that we do. Um, all the auctions, all the show vehicles, all the races, historic races. It's uh, the biggest event we do, probably the most memorable. So there's just so much going on at one time. Some of the other things that we've gotten to do too is we'll haul some armored vehicles for the government or anybody, something being transported that's really heavy. We can ramp our lift gate. So it's been kind of fun to see what we can and can't do with our trailer. But one of the coolest things with working here is, you know, we've gotten to meet people like Jay Leno and Barry McGuire and at some of the different events. And it's just been really neat to work with them one-on-one -on -one and do their deliveries. and visit with them. Yeah, we, um, we have a lot of good people here. There's a lot of, lot of wonderful people that work here. People have been here for a very, very long time. Just open people with welcome arms and always willing to help. We've lost a few very, very good ones and that's kind of challenging because you go to places for dinner and you go, oh, I remember going to dinner with so-and-so there. And I love how everybody's willing to help each other. Our theory is you don't ever want to leave a man behind. So if we're in an event loading, even if we're done and all closed up, we still want to go to each trailer and make sure nobody needs any help before we leave. We've been in this situation where we've needed help before. And I just don't want to leave anybody behind that could use something because I don't want anybody to get hurt. At the end of the day, is everybody's safe. The cars are safe, the equipment's safe the business is prospering and if the business is doing well then we're all going to do well thank you for checking out our truck and trailer looking forward to seeing you soon <laughs>